クリムゾニアのために全てを覆すラングリッサー Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So, this is part two of the Apex Arena box design video. And this video will primarily focus on examples. But before I begin giving those examples, I wanted to mention some great points that were made in the comment section of my first video. First point is by Santi Chai, and that is about designing Apex boxes needs to take quite a bit of time, especially if you're not whaling. Because you're going to want to raise characters to at least five stars, if not six stars. And so that will definitely take a long amount of time. So, in general, you're probably a bit too late to design an amazing box for this season of season 6, but you'll be able to start getting characters up and running for potentially season 7. The key point is to understand how you want to make your playstyle and the synergy of characters so you'll have a great box in the future. William Chu also made a few good points that I actually forgot to mention. Paraphrasing it briefly, you should use SR enchants to get good attack or int stats on your weapons or accessories. And then that way you can save your SSR scrolls for your armor and helm slots, where you're going to want to get a high HP roll as well as getting 4 or 5% attack or int. And on screen right now is some of the rolls I got with my SR scrolls on my weapons. So you can see here that in general you only get two stats rather than three. Getting three stats is possible, but generally speaking, when you do get three stats, the third stat is not going to be great. Overall, this does show that you can get pretty good rolls even using SR scrolls. So they are well worth using, and you can buy SR scrolls every week from the store, 50 of them. So now let's go into the demonstration of Apex Arena boxes. First, let's demonstrate a box that is quite similar to mine by Strategist Fjeller. He got into l a n g r i s s a r e g around the same time I did. I think we both got into l a n g r i s s a r e g in the third week. And unlike my box, which was Legion of Glory, Origins of Light, with a side of Mythical, he is running a Protagonist, Glory, and y e l e s s mix with a bit of Mythical as well. His box, the Mythical characters in it are Juggler, Hobo, Yulia, Rosenseal, and Rin. The y e l e s s characters are Landius, Rachel, and Hobo. And of course, it's worth mentioning that. Most of these characters are also protagonists, right? Landius and Rachel, in particular, are protagonist heroes, and as is most of the Legion of Glory heroes, like Ledin, Elwin, Reen is protagonist, Ares is protagonist, Chris is protagonist, t i e r i s is protagonist, Matthew is the protagonist faction buffer, l i a n a is the protagonist, and Almeda is there as protagonist and Legion of Glory. And actually, Almeda needs to be mentioned because Almeda is his meme character. It's not that she's amazing, but that he likes to use her. With that said, Almeda does offer some flexibility to his box. Almeda provides healing via her talent, debuffing via her talent, and Almeda also can both AoE and single target. Even though it's a meme character, it offers some utility in his box design overall. And finally, he actually has six characters who can revive Ledin, Chris, Hobo, Landius, Yulia, and Rosenseal. So, l e d i n and Chris both revive via the Redeemers. Hobo and Landis both revive via Indomitable. Yulia revives via her talent. And r o d e n Seal, when she activates her 3C skill, she can revive. So, there's enough revivers to make it very difficult for characters like Assassins, like Zerida, to kill things. Inherently, though, both our boxes are very much about disabling enemy guard. So that we can take out the weaklings. There is l e d i n with Righteous Duel, there is Juggler with Sacred Beast Him and Beast Shock, and there is Yulia with her Godly Menace to disable a tank's guard. And then after that, you can have your other characters launch out strikes to kill those vulnerable and weak targets. His box, however, utilizes many more heroes that offer healing after combat than mine does. Chris, Almeda, Elwyn, Reen, Rachel, pretty much everyone in this box does combat as well as healing after combat. Next, then, let's talk about single target assault boxes. Several people have already gotten into l a n g r i s s a rank with these boxes, such as Santi Chai and Michizak. The basic idea behind these boxes is that you bring 7 to 10 high mobility strikers. This seems like a difficult task, but they're actually quite common. For example, Leon, SP Elwyn, Sonya, Rosalia, Ares, Togo Brothers, and Claret are all high mobility strikers. In addition to this, assassins with high mobility include Alustriel, Hiei, and Zerida. There is also Deedlet with her double action maneuvering and then attacking at 2 range. Juggler, who can move forward, Sacred Beast Him and Beast Shock, and even Yusuke, who can 
move 4 tiles, and attack at 4 tiles once you trigger Psychic Eruption and an ally dies. In addition to just the single target strikers though, you should have roughly 3 mobility buffers to further increase your character's mobility so they can all get into attack range, potentially just right from turn 1. And the mobility buffers that are most common are Estelle, Akaya, Iris, and Imelda. Other ones that can be used is Luna, sort of. Uh, I say Luna is sort of, in large part because she is not a great single target striker after that. If Luna has someone else faction buff for her, she can bring Raging Thunder, then she is a very powerful single target striker. But more commonly, Luna ends up bringing Wind God Realm with her own faction buff. And in that situation, she is not a very strong single target attacker. An upcoming mobility buffer is Werner. So there's a whole bunch of different mobility buffers you can bring in these boxes. And the final portion of all this is you usually bring around roughly two healers because you're not really relying on healers, you're relying on having characters attack one after another. And the two healers that you would usually pick are out of Tiaris, who can attack Blessing and healing like characters, Iris, who provides healing after combat, can teleport characters forward, and finally Wilder, whose high stakes would provide healing before battle, as well as having things like regroup to potentially trigger someone to act again. Let's go over the two boxes now. Santi Chai's box consists, it's actually not a complete single target assault box to be for full disclosure, because Leaden is mixed in there. Leaden really doesn't have a role in this box, but you can kind of say that Santi Chai is running this in large part, I suspect, uh, due to a lack of single target strikers built. So Leaden fits kind of in there. At the very least, if you teleport Leaden forward, he can righteous duel someone, break up the enemy formation, or disable enemy guard. And he has Akaya and Iris to make this happen. On Mitrisak's side, what you see is a full single target assault box. What I mean by that is that there is just a single healer, Tiaris. Yes, Deedlet can provide healing and combat power, Imelda provides some healing as well as mobility buffs and damage increases, but there is just one dedicated healer, Tiaris, and even she is meant to increase combat power by Miracle as well as Attack Blessing. So overall, the whole concept of these boxes is that you have lots of characters with 8 or 9 mobility, and then you buff up their mobility even further and give them stat boosts so that they can wipe out the enemy tank then wipe out all the vulnerable DPS characters that they have after that. Now let's talk about the Chinese server Season 6 playoff because this gives us a good reference for heroes that are commonly used. They are overwhelmingly single target strikers. So going through this list for example, Elwyn is single target strike, Zerda is single target strike, Lolly Jess is single target strike, Deedlet is single target strike, Yulia is single target strike, Illustrial is single target strike, and Hobo is single target strike. Juggler and Ares can both be considered single target strike as well, although they can do both. Liana and Rosenseal are here as healers, so they can be mostly neglected. Hilda and Landius are tanks, so they can be neglected as well. So there's only two characters who are AoEs, and that is Hobo and Dream. So of the 15 most popular heroes, you got two healers, two tanks, two hybrid heroes who can do both AoE and single targets, then you just have two AoE characters, and the remaining seven are all single target strikers. So despite that though, AoE boxes are still viable. We saw them get used pretty deep into the playoffs too. And the season six AoE box is kind of like the following. In terms of basic design, it is actually very similar to the season five AoE boxes, in that you bring two or three tanks, three healers, 7 AoE attackers, and then 2 to 3 other heroes. And the 2 to 3 other heroes include, let's say, Zerda, SP Elwyn, Yulia, or Lolly Jess. The basic design concept is still very, very similar. You can say there's a bit of a reduced number of AoE attackers and an increased number of tanks and healers, but despite that, it's fairly identical. What has changed though is the characters that are used in these boxes. It is still mostly Mythical, Dark, Reincarnation, and Yilis but the addition of Reincarnation has changed things quite dramatically. First of all, one of the key characters in any of these AoE boxes is actually Florentia, because Florentia's 3C skill provides both healing to allies as well as doing AoE damage to the enemies, and clocks can trigger on it to allow for more launches of AoEs and so on. You can kind of say it's like Licorice's Dark Despair, 
But the big difference here is Florentia, after she launches out her AoE for 3C, she can also use an Act Again skill on an ally. So she can trigger someone else to act after she launches out that AoE, which is huge. Himiko is also strongly recommended for Season 6 AoE boxes, and that's because if anyone tries to single target strike Himiko, she makes combat not occur, and then she teleports back to the closest ally. It's ridiculous. Uh, so it just kind of means that she's an AoE attacker who cannot get single target strike initially. She is part of the US Legends as well as Time and Space factions, so it's fairly convenient to get faction buffs for her. And finally, worth mentioning is Hilda, who is the new, I guess, reincarnation tank, buffs up a lot of these AoE attackers that you previously used, such as Arianrod, such as Florentia. She buffs up Lolly Jess, who is more single target oriented, to be fair. She buffs up Licorice, and she does also buff up Ares. So, a lot of the AoE attackers or a lot of the heroes you use in your boxes will be buffed up by Hilda. Overall, my concluding thought is that the Season 6 AoE box, broadly speaking, kind of requires you to wail, for good or for ill. Because you're using so many of the new heroes that are released during the season, that in order to have them at 6 stars for use during the playoffs, you better have spent money. <laughs> you're not going to have Hilda properly built unless you've drawn like crazy on the banner. So next, let's talk about Assault AoE boxes by comparison. So the whole concept behind Assault AoE boxes is that you're going to crush the enemy with AoE strikes regardless of your character's style. Like the goal is to kill off more enemies faster than your character's style, more or less. You're aiming for a very short fight, a very quick battle. So it's kind of like YOLO assault, if you will. And plus, it's not really meant for the playoffs. The whole idea is you kind of ban Rosenseal first and try to apply lots of debuffs on the enemies while launching out the AoEs on them. And these kind of boxes need some way to deal with juggler. You need to stop Juggler from healing up characters between AoEs. And the ways you can do it is, for example, Acid Burn, the AoE can apply cannot be healed debuffs on all the enemies, such as bringing Igbert. Listel can heal reversal. Right? Uh, Zerida can actually assassinate Juggler in one shot if she attacks him with a Crystal Stinger equipped. What you need for these kind of AoE assault boxes then is you're going to need roughly three mobility buffs. To, in order for your characters to be able to move that far to hit the enemy. So the mobility buffs most commonly would be something like Werner, Akaya, Estelle, those kind of characters. And finally, the tanks you bring would usually be three, and they're there purely for temporary protection. The whole point of this AoE assault box is you don't really have healers. So your tank is there to temporarily protect your characters against long-range threats like Ares and like Elwyn in his SP class. And so the tank will tank that hit, revive, and then allow your characters to get to work and so on. So finally, you might have some characters who are single target strikers to help finish off the enemies as well. So your mo and these characters would tend to be like your mobility buffers. Right? For example, Werner, who mobility buffs, is also a pretty decent single target striker. Akaya, who mobility buffs, is also a pretty decent single target striker. Your tanks, can single target strike, or in the case of Estelle, AoE, and so on and so forth. So it's like no healing, full assault, kind of like the AoE version of Michuzak's box, if you will. Just keep attacking and striking, and end the fight quickly. So now, for the final point, let's look ahead at the Season 7 box designs instead. And with any season, we always have to look at the banners that are being released during the course of that season. And fortunately, since we're on the international server, we get to see what banners come up on China. And what we've seen so far is there's going to be a Kruger and Vincent banner, a Patsir and Toa banner, and then the most recent one is the Lord of Crimsonia and Sissy White banner. But overwhelmingly, what you can say is we see four characters that are basically Empire, Mythical, or Dark. And these characters are AoE attackers. So Kruger, Vincent, and Lord of Crimsonia are all AoE attackers, and Vincent can revive once, while Lord of Crimsonia can actually revive multiple times. His revival uh, is a passive that can actually refresh itself. So it adds a very interesting element. 
Overall, what we're seeing is Empire Mythical Dark get more AoEs. In addition to this, Bernhard is getting his 3C faction buff, and what that one does is, first, it's a faction buff that also gives all Empire heroes plus 18% damage dealt increase when entering combat. Secondly, when he activates his faction buff, he also gives himself plus 1 mobility, plus 15% damage, and plus 1 skill range. So what this means is, for example, if you run Bernhard with Balanced Blade and Apex Boots, he's going to end up with 5 movement, a 3 ring sword dance, followed by a 2 ring 0.1 times damage AoE strike. Uh, it doesn't have to be Apex Boots, it can be the Divine Boots as well, that provides defense instead of attack. And then similarly, if you decide to run his Shield Bash skill, which is traditionally a 1 range skill, it's actually a 2 range Shield Bash, so you can stun that 2 range. So I think Bernhard though overall in general should be an AoE attacker and he just enables the use of a lot of the past Empire characters. For example, Leonhard is part of Empire, Sakura is part of Empire, no, Florentia is actually part of Empire, SP Elwin is part of Empire, Ares is part of Empire, Ulti Muller actually gets an SP class coming up so he can return to boxes. So. A lot of those older AoE attackers, which no longer really see use, may very well make a return with, along with Bernhard. So we're going to definitely see Empire return as a faction. And of course, the new heroes, like Vincent, is part of Empire. Other than that, the final thing worth mentioning of these six new heroes is Sissy White. Sissy White is a glory and princess character who is an act-again healer. And what's unique about her is she also can summon mercenaries. So, and these mercenaries are like, uh, it can be, let's say, a uh, Lancer mercenary that can guard. It can be an inf it can be a cavalry mercenary, and then I think it can be an infantry mercenary. So, it definitely adds a very interesting element. You having yet another act again healer who can also summon mercenaries is certainly a good thing. I can see Legion of Glory potentially becoming a faction where you bring lots of characters to provide act again. For example, you have Liana providing act again. You have Sissy White providing Akka again. You have Akaya, who can turn her Wolf Summon into an Act Again effect. And then, of course, other characters who can Act Again who exist, they're not part of Legion of Glory, but Florentia can Act Again, Wilder can provide Act Again via Regroup. So there's lots of Act Again characters who can certainly change things and make it interesting. If you maybe trigger Act Again three times on a single turn, you're probably going to wipe out the enemy pretty badly if you get three additional actions while they can't act at all. And that is everything I wanted to say about box design. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've got some ideas or some interesting concepts out of this in terms of figuring out your box design. If you don't pull anything else out of this video, I would say the key point to keep in mind is use a tank who can faction buff up the other heroes that you use. That will enable your box much, much more. Thanks for watching, everyone, and on that note, Nitro Ends.